Well, good morning guys. Well, it's morning here in the UK anyway. This is RLC 321. Back again. Oh, dear. Back again. And we've now been... I've now moved us over to my spray booth. Because today, we're going to be talking about priming and how to set up our not our airbrush or anything like that because there's loads of videos out there about airbrushes I'm not going to show you how to clean the airbrush because again there's loads of videos out there that do that a lot better than than what I can but what I'm gonna gonna talk about is get yourself some of these the crocodile clips you can buy off of Amazon or eBay fairly cheaply and these skewers wooden skewers you again the pound shop or any cheap place you can pick up hundreds of them but they're ideal for holding our parts now you can probably see i have two airbrushes here i've got this airbrush just a nasty nice and cheap china make um i use this for my priming it's absolutely perfect for priming because it comes out as a nice wide spray and absolutely perfect for it so I always use this one for priming and this one is a Vader WD 180 um, got it from bartsharp.co.uk and I have to tell you it's a pretty good airbrush um, you know it's it's got dual action dual action on it you can adjust the you can adjust the airflow paint flow at the back here you can adjust the airflow at the bottom here and for 25 pounds plus postage I think it was, was it 25 it was 25 when I got it I think it's now up to like 30 odd but definitely one of the best airbrushes and I use this for everything else okay I'm just gonna put that one aside because I don't need it right now I'm just gonna be focusing on priming and how to how to prime so I'm just gonna put this back onto the onto my compressor and now the compressor I've got the air compressor I've got set to about 1520 psi which is perfect for just blowing out the um oh what's it called again primer and also whenever you especially now after Christmas do not throw away any of these the uh, polystyrene sheets because this is where once you put our parts on, we can just stick them in and keep them in some kind of order. So I'm just going to put this out of the way so you can, so we can see it, and, and so it's just actually behind the camera now. Now I don't know how much of this I'll be able to try and keep in shot. I'll be keeping as much in in shot as I possibly can. But first of all, what we're going to start on is all of the armor, the inside inner frame parts for this now remember this is the the one that we we sprayed before now where you hold the put the clips put the clips anywhere where it's not going to show basically so like right here I know that bit's going to be plugged inside of the part so I can actually just put the clip in there and it holds it nicely now I'm going to do the same with this I mean this is the foot here but because I want to get inside there as well because it will swivel a little bit I'm gonna um, unhook it and again this foot part this here I could just put my clip in there jobs are good on. Right. and the other part of the foot and grab it on that ball joint there Now, the leg, I'm going to take the top piece off, so I can hold that separate. Now, remember what I said, this one, we're going to have to do things slightly different, because when we are spray painting it, we need to, even when we're priming it, we're going to need to bend it in the, the two different positions, right, so we'll spray it like that first then we will bend it 
and spray all the parts we couldn't get okay simple as that now to hold this one you can probably tell there's not really anywhere we can clip it on we could, could clip it on here or on these parts here mm. so I could let's see if it's if I put that in there we could hold it like that because then we're not really touching anything and everything's going to be be done so same with the normal armor parts just choose a clip that's not gonna get in the way and then we go we can hold it now I try and keep all of the armor parts separate to the inner frame so I know what's what and where's where um, this is going to be a fun one um, don't think that's going to be shown so you can clip it there and same again here I'll just clip it on that bit there now this is going to be the fun part we're finally going to get into the after hours and hours of watching me build it, paint it, we're now going to get onto the priming. Once we do the priming, the next video we'll be going on to talk about um, pre-shading and things like that. I personally prefer to pre-shade, but I also do um, post-shade as well on some parts. And remember, I'm going to try and do a two-tone colour scheme on this as well, just to try and make it stand out. And we want to make it look awesome. That's what we want to do. And actually, I think I'm going to do that bit there for that. Uh, some of these parts I'm going to be painting black on the inside as well because I mean I'm going to be using a very dark or black pre-shade on this some of these parts I'm still needing to to sand off because I've obviously been very lazy and I haven't even done that which is typical of me right, that can stay Stay in, I think. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. So, ah, uh, yeah, definitely gonna have to send some of these parts. But been it seems like I've been rushing ahead and I've forgotten to do some parts oh well so I will quickly do that before we continue with the the video but with the what I can I can show you how to do the the priming with the inner frame so we shall we shall do that so it's not it's not a total lost so it's all good But these clips and alligator clips are a godsend because it, it stops you from putting your fingers and hands on and everything on the parts and it just makes life so much easier. So that's all the white parts, now the gold, all the white and red. Now these are what's going to be gold, so we shall find the parts that I'm not going to show. Oh, I did promise I wasn't going to do something like that again, didn't I? 
Oh well. Now, so you can tell I'm not really worried about keeping these in any kind of order as such because the, the only time you're going to need them in order is when we put it back together. Because that, that's the beauty of doing this. So, you know, the, the people that love building these kits, when you paint it, you can build it to see how it, how it all goes. Then you can take the damn thing apart again and build it again. Now this this part here I don't know if you can see but there's no way I can actually get a clip on there I mean I could clip it on here just like that but the clip alligator clip may get in the way so what you can do you can get just a bit of blue tack on the end of a skewer make it all nice and warm warm it all up and then there we go and now that bit of blue tack is holding that in place which is just what we want you can tell I've done use this blue tack before these not on this particular kit but I've used it because I've got blue tack on some of these skewers There we go. Right. Again, we're going to keep that handy as well. As we, that's to put our parts back in. Now I've got another styrene sheet here. And what this, this is going to do, once I've finished painting everything, I'll put it up that part of the way. Then all of my um, parts that I've painted so they can dry, I'm going to be put back up there right now I've got my compressor on all already I'm just going to be switching on my um, spray booth in a minute so I can extract the the gunk out but what I'm going to do first now I only ever paint with acrylic acrylic paints um, I haven't got any oh, what's the word I'm looking for lacquer based paints or anything I only ever use acrylics and what I'm going to be using right now is Vallejo's surface primer in grey you can use black you can use white you can use any color you want but I just prefer grey because it's mid-range um, I have built my own thinners or made my own thinners and again there's videos on YouTube to show you how you do that if you want to and um, I'm just going to thin this down a, a bit more in theory Vallejo thinners is airbrush ready out of the box but I just prefer thinning it down just a little bit more just to help matters basically and I'm not going to be thinning it down much just a, a little because the, the thinners that I've made has also got some flow improver and things like that in there uh, a couple more I think because yeah, I don't want it too thin and I don't want it too thick either because if you do it too thick, too thin, it's just going to run all over the part. If you do it too thick, it's just going to look like it's just not going to go through the airbrush. Right now, th again, this is going to be a fairly long video, so I apologise. Now I'm going to turn the extractor fan on. So I do apologise if it's loud, but it kind of has to be. So don't know if you can see in there. Just put some primer in there, give it a test fire.
that seems to be spitting, and I think that's spitting because the the needle needs to be cleaned just a, a little bit. Let's have a look now. Yeah, that should be fine. As I say, this is just to put the, the primer on, so I'm just going to use the... There we go. And you can see just doing a fairly light misty coat first of all. Just to let the primer have something to first coat just needs to be a light one, it doesn't have to be really thick and put it on, just fairly light, just to start, and always move the airbrush around, don't keep the part or the airbrush in one place, just keep everything moving, another fine misty coat there. Just a couple more parts on there. On the um, inner frame. And then we go back to the first inner frame and give it a proper, proper coat. I say this light dusting coat just basically gives something for the paint and the primer to stick to on the surface now some people will tell you you need to wash your parts resin yes definitely you need to wash your parts with resin kits plastic I have not found that so much these days but if you want to there's no harm in doing it All right so now we're going to do the proper coat on the, the primer Again, doesn't have to be perfect. But anyway, you know you're gonna paint, make sure you've got primer. And there. Right, let's see if we can get it a bit closer. There you go. That's what we're looking for. So put that down there. Piece. Give it a nice good coat. Now, what's also good about priming is that now remember this is the part that we were sanding. I'm not showing you that we were sanding. Now, hopefully, you shouldn't be able to see the seam there. So, we shall have a look at that in a second once I've finished priming it fully.
Evet. Yani. I'll let that dry, and we'll come back and have a look at these these parts. Let's prime some of these other armor, uh, not armor, but yeah, the armor parts while we're at it. Just a few of them. Again, I'm just doing very light coats. I'm not doing a heavy, heavy, heavy coats on them. So that was a gold piece. Let's try a white piece. Now, as I'm saying, what's good with priming the parts is that not only is it something for the paint to key onto or stick to when you are painting it but you're about to see any imperfections or any problems and things you may have missed that you want to go over again oh, that was like an earthquake sorry guys I knocked the camera Put a bit more a bit more primer in there But I don't know if you can see see here if I can get this up close to the camera I've actually missed a nub there so you can sand it and then we can go back over them again and get rid of the the nasty parts that we have missed so let's sand this white part properly with my little fingerprint that I put on there. Now for some reason, I don't know why, but this primer is sort of like leaving little bits, little bits of coming out. So I'm going to have to sand this, sand this down anyway, but it's not so much of a problem. Right, there we go, now finish with the primer, which is what I wanted to do. Right, so that is pretty much how you prime. Um, I've also made my own like, airbrush cleaner as well, which comes in extremely handy. some reason this airbrush is leaking so I'm gonna have to try and figure out what's going on with that now <laughs> typical right. get my airbrush pot this airbrush pot is absolutely brilliant and zip all the excess gunk out of there couple of quick sprays, a bit of a blowback. Blowback is when you hold the, the front end, push the, the, the air down and pull it back. Basically that will help clear out the, your nozzle in between your needle, in between colour changes. Right, okay, so 
that's that's the priming and how well it's how I prime them put it that way I'm going to continue priming the rest of the, the kit and once once they are, they're dried and I'm back then we can talk about how I go about pre-shading so um, before we, what I'll do before then I'm going to going to have a look at these inner frame parts that are drying once they're dry we're going to have a look at those so you can see what the, the primer actually looks like and see if there's any problem areas things that we missed or anything like that I mean I know there's going to be things that I missed on the actual model as we've already discovered but I'll be back in a minute ok guys I'm back again I'm just priming up the rest of these parts something I forgot to mention while I'm priming oh, hopefully you can still hear me um, make sure your parts are clean um, as an example I didn't see this part I've just finished priming now I don't know if it's gonna come out come on zoom in but there is a cat hair in there now the cat hair is not too much of a problem because once it's dry I can just sand it and the cat hair will come off but always make sure your parts are clean give it a, a first of air if, if it's not just to get rid of any so just push down on your your airbrush no paint will come out but air will and I'll just give your part a quick dusting make sure it's okay and then we could just go in with our airbrush so that's something I thought fair to tell you guys now I've nearly finished priming these all of these parts while I'm waiting for the the other ones to dry give it a bit of a flow no, that doesn't sound right when I say that does it oh, I'll do that again But this Valio primer, I think, works brilliantly. Because as it, as it dries, it also goes into the cracks and crevices, and it's just a really, really good primer, and it goes on nice and smooth. Now, I used to use it when I used to paint 40 Warhammer models. Um, I don't do the Warhammer models anymore, mainly because I don't get a chance to go out and and play them as much as I used to. Right, not too worried about the underneath, but it's only this part that I need to make sure I've got a good layer in. And don't forget the sides. A lot of people in their airbrush forget about the sides of parts, because that's also going to have paint on. Now you can probably tell I'm not wearing gloves, that's because I'm just using acrylic. If I was using enamel or anything like a base, you would need to wear gloves. Always safety comes first. Now, with this one, you can see there's a great big massive seam line. Right there, so I'm going to have to try and get rid of that before I continue doing anything else. That seam line is going to look ugly. finished there we go. just two more pieces to go and I can't remember if I've mentioned but when you're priming once it's dried you'll be able to see all of the imperfections, any problems, any areas we haven't need to clean up 
which is uh, one of the good reasons why you prime your models. The other reason, if you try and just airbrush paint straight onto this, it's not going to stick. Not at all, no way. Right, now just gonna clean the old airbrush out. So just give me a few minutes while I do that. Um, and then what we're going to do next is have a look at the inner armor parts, see how they have turned out. Hopefully they've turned out really well. Right, now let's talk about our other parts there now, they should be fairly fairly dry not too dry just yet but dry enough and let's bring them down and have a look at them right. there we go right. let's have a look at this part here. Now you can see we've got the primer one and you can just barely, mind you one on camera it looks like you can see that it looks like the Grand Canyon but it's not as bad as it was. Okay I suppose it could have been better. Um, so look, this is the leg part. You can see where I've now moved it so I could spray some primer in there. But this is the effect we're after with the primer. Now as you can see, I don't know if we can get up close to here. Right. Ugly mark, we need to get rid of that so things will fit properly. But without the primer being on there, I didn't see, didn't notice, didn't even notice that was there. Also got another piece of dust or something there. But other than that, I think the priming has come out A-OK. -okay. And there's it back straight where everything's now fully covered up. And what else is there that we done? This part here as well. I'm not too worried about these being fully closed. Just because it's I'm not going to really see it that much. I mean, it's touch dry. But yeah. Okay. And let me just move the camera a little bit. And over here. Yeah, excuse the messy workstation. Over here is all of the other parts that have been primed and ready to go. Now, there is problems with some of these. Like this, this part here has got a seam line. I need to glue that together and fill that and I'll show you the process of doing that. It's again it's very similar to what we've done before even with the, the primer it's exactly the same process some of the parts I need to sand the nubs off and you already know how to do that so I don't need to show you you guys how to do that but yeah oh and by the way this red thing that's what I hold my camera on nowadays makes it a lot nicer and easier to use right so with that out of the way, it's now time to say goodbye and I will see you on the next instalment which we are going to be going into talking about um, pre-shading, uh, what colours you can and can't use or can use or don't need to use, it's all subjective entirely up to you. Um, and we shall go from there. So this is RLC321 saying have a good day and I'll speak to you soon. Take care guys. Bye bye.